right, Daily Ticker Time on a Tuesday brought to you by Pelican Brewing. Visit pelicanbrewing.com for more details on locations, events, award-winning beers, independently brewed since 1996. Pelican Brewing, born at the beach. Excited for college football season to officially be here, and we're running a little little late on the dirty pole, so we thought a good way to kind of knock a few teams off in one hit will be with our good friend Max Chadwick, a pro football focus, the uh, co-host of the PFF College Football Show, at Max Chadwick CFB on Twitter. Go give him a follow. Just got over 5,000 subscribers for the channel, man. Big milestone to get to. Max, let's start with a hard-hitting question. Are we pro or anti week zero of Mm. college football? Oh, thanks for having me on again, guys. I am absolutely pro uh, week zero. If it means we had a, a week earlier than college football than we expected, honestly. Yes. So yes. Uh, I'm all for it. Ooh. I think this is the only time of the year I'm, I'm pumped for the uh, really horrible games in college football. Yes. Uh, so I, I will be a true sicko on watching all of the week zero games this Saturday. I actually think the Florida State Georgia Tech game actually is a really interesting game. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited to watch that one. But. Yeah, I will be watching SMU Nevada, all the other bad ones, too. I'm, I'm really excited to watch it. Look, I mean, SMU could be a dark horse in the ACC. We get our first look at them this weekend. They play Five Nevada. o'clock. Yeah. Is Nevada any exactly. good? We'll find out. I don't know. Why? Okay, look, we, we <laughs> look, let's just get into the Florida State one because we were going to ask you about a few teams on our preseason poll, getting some Big Ten stuff. But you say Florida State, Georgia Tech's interesting. That spread, I think, depending on the book, is 10.5 to 12. I guess it just depends where you're looking. But – why is that game interesting? Like, is I have no, am I supposed to think Georgia Tech is Hayes good? King, look out! Uh, come on, really? I, I think I think they're a little dangerous. The, why Why I think it's interesting is because like as far as they number ten in the the AP poll and the coaches poll, I have no idea what this team is right now. And honestly, I think ranking the number ten is just kind of giving them a tip of the cap for last year. But I mean, basically all of last year's team is gone, really. So. Uh, I, I'm really – it was interesting to me because I, I think Florida State, I wouldn't rank them number 10. I put them more like number 16 or 17, I believe we had them in our ranking. Uh, I have no idea what this team would look like this year, and I'm excited to see what they do look like in their first game. And, yeah, Georgia Tech is a little dangerous, man. They, they have a really uh, really good ground game with Haynes King and Jamal Haynes. Uh, they have some nice players on that offense as well. Yeah, I think Georgia Tech, if Florida State's not careful, that they could uh, make that game really interesting. Yeah, but but the Florida State <laughs> thing, so we watched DJ pretty closely here at Oregon State last year, Max, and we've seen him at Clemson, and I, he seems like genuinely a good person. I have no evidence that that dude's going to go win a conference for a team that's kind of reloading this year, and I'm not saying the ACC isn't winnable for Florida State. I just don't have any evidence that that guy – can lead a team and go do that, which is why I don't think I like Florida State to win the ACC. Yeah, I'm not picking them to win the ACC either, honestly. I don't even have to make an ACC title game uh, either. So uh, I, I like DJ. I think he is, you know, capable of winning a conference title in that, in that conference. I, I think he actually brought Clemson to the conference title game one year before getting benched for Kate Klubnik. Uh, so I think he's a good quarterback. He's more like a top 20, top 25 quarterback in the nation. Um, but again, like outside of him, even without him, uh, the receiving room is brand new, brand new running backs as well. Yeah. Uh, they lost some key pieces defensively. Like I, I just have a lot of questions with Florida State and why I, I don't think they're a top ten team right now. Yeah, replacing a lot. That is the one of the the, the only marquee game really of Week Zero, just to see what Florida State looks like. And Georgia Tech, you know, they can pull some upsets. We'll see what they do this year in the ACC. I, I did want to get your thoughts. A couple other teams we were going to ask you about to kind of knock some off of our preseason list as we get ready for the start of the year. We're talking with Max Chadwick, a pro football focus. He does the uh, PFF College Football Show. Missouri is, is unique in the SEC because they had the, kind of an upstart year last year. You break through. You have one of the best wide receivers in the country. Seems like momentum is going in the right direction. But that conference is a meat grinder. We know that. And they get lost in the shuffle with Ole Miss having a great offseason and Tennessee gets a lot of attention. Georgia, Bama, Texas, Oklahoma, obviously. Where are you at on Missouri going into this year? Yeah, I'm really, I really like Missouri. I think Missouri is a top 10 team in the country right now. I have them making the college football playoff as well. Uh, part of that is due to the, a really easy schedule, honestly. Uh, I think Missouri uh, kind of lucked out with their schedule this year. It's not as difficult. Of course, every SEC schedule is going to be difficult, right? But it's not as difficult as, as other SEC schedules this year. So um, I think they're going to win 10 games at least. And that means if you win 10 games in the SEC, you're probably going to make a college football playoff. So yeah. uh, they bring back so much talent offensively. Bring back Brady Cook, who's, a, I think, a top-10 quarterback in the country. Bring back Luther Burden, who's the best receiver in the country. They bring back their other four of their other top five receivers from last year as well come back for another year. Uh, I like that offensive line. And also Kirby Moore, their offensive coordinator, 
I thought he could get some head coaching jobs. That's the job he did last year. He's back for another year as well. So they do have questions defensively after losing some key pieces in that secondary. But uh, I think that offense is going to be absolutely electric. And like I said, with that schedule, I fully expect Missouri to make the uh, comfortable playoff this year. How many, if Missouri makes it, how many SEC teams do you have in the playoff? I have five right now. Um, I I don't know if we're actually going to get at that many. I I think five is the absolute maximum. Um, The only reason I picked five is because – I'm kind of in the mindset of, okay, I want, to get, I want to get as many teams right as possible, and I just have more trust in those five SEC teams than, say, a, a you know, fourth Big Ten team or a third ACC – or, excuse me, a second ACC team or a second Big 12 team. I have more trust in those five to be really good and win 10 games than I do in those, uh, those other schools right now. That would be – five, five teams in year one of an expanded playoff would make everything – There will be outrage <laughs> if it's five teams. If that happens. <laughs> uh, at, Max, at, at Max Chadwick CFB on Twitter, go give him a follow. Utah's another team that we have obviously followed closely for many years, and we have a lot of admiration for Kyle Whittingham. And they're one of these teams, you know, Texas and Oregon are kind of in this category as well of – could you win your new conference in the first year of a new conference? They have a 26-year-old or 27-year-old quarterback. Um, where are you at on the Utes this year, or are you as high on them as maybe some else are around the country? I like them. Uh, I think they're certainly a team in the mix for the Big 12. I wouldn't say they're the Big 12 favorite like the sports books or most people would say right now. Uh, they're not my pick to win the Big 12 at least, but uh, I love. I like them a lot. I mean, Kyle Whittingham and his staff is – one of, if not the best coaching staff in the country. I mean, they seem to always have a great team every single year, no matter what the circumstances are. I mean, they went 8-5 and five last year without their star quarterback, without their star tight end, and many, many other starters were hurt for a large, or large portion of last year, and they still went 8-5. and five. So um, I think you bring back Cam Rising, you bring back Brand Keithy. Uh, Utah is certainly in the mix, but I think it's a wide-open Big 12 conference this year, and I'm not going to say there is a true favorite but Utah is certainly in the mix for the uh, Big 12 title this year, for sure. Would there be a disappointment in that conference? Like, who is the team with the most expectation in that conference? Because it is such a weird, wide-open situation with Kansas State, the Kansas team, Oklahoma State, Utah. Who is it for you? Yeah, I think uh, the disappointment-wise, probably um, Kansas State, I think, has more questions than people might give them credit for, honestly. I think they're a team that's, like, second in the odds right now. Uh, I don't have them making the Big 12 title game. I think uh, my pick to ultimate to win is Arizona. I think Arizona, for me at least, is pretty clearly the best team in the a Big 12 right now. Um, so I'm picking them to win the Big 12. But I, I can see a number of teams winning it, right? I think, you know, Kansas, uh, Utah, Kansas State, West Virginia, uh, there's a lot of teams that are really, really good in that conference. Uh, but I right now I have Arizona winning the conference. Who's Max Chadwick picking to be in his final four? Who's your national champion? I got Ohio State. I got Ohio State for uh, the uh, to win the national championship this year. I think Georgia is right there as well, uh, and I go back and forth on it every day. But uh, roster wise, I think Ohio State is probably the best in the country. And then uh, I really like to hire Chip Kelly as offensive coordinator as well. So I got the uh, Buckeyes getting it done this year. Uh, Max, there's a lot of noise just locally with Oregon State fans who read the internet and are hoping that they get into a a power conference. And I don't know if that'll happen, but I am curious. In a weird year where they're in their own little bubble, but like kind of playing a Mountain West schedule, how crucial being good and having a very good season, which I think is like eight and four or better, how crucial is it in your estimation for Oregon State and Washington State this year to have that season? Yeah, I think it's probably pretty critical, right? I mean, you look at their uh, where they're standing right now, and they're still in the Pac-12 technically, but they're playing a Mountain West schedule, like you said. I think... What might happen is the Pac-12 might just add a whole bunch of teams and just remake the Pac-12. Um, so I, I think it's probably important that those two um, do that. And But I, just, I don't think that will get them into another conference, though, if that's what you're asking me, unfortunately. So um, I, I think it's you know, it would be, it'd be good for them to win seven or eight games. I think right now both their win totals are set at seven and a half right now. Um, so I think if they go lower than that, then like, oh, man, this, they really fell off a cliff. But – yeah, I think I think both their expectations now are seven and five, eight and four, uh, and then probably remake the Pac-12 from there. Maybe add a whole bunch of Mountain West teams to the Pac-12 and make a a brand new Pac-12 this year. Well, Max Chadwick with the correct take that Week Zero is awesome, and we're all excited to watch SMU Nevada five o'clock, I believe, on the CBS Sports <laughs> Network. I am jacked out of my gourd for it. Max Chadwick, CFB on Twitter. Go give him a follow. The co-host of PFF's College Football Show. They got a good an friend. award show one out too. That's yes, really good. a good friend of the program. Thanks so much for the time as always, Max. Enjoy Week Zero, and hopefully we can do this again soon. Thanks, guys.
There you go. Max Chadwick. Good stuff from him. And I love when you when you have a guest on that brings in brings in the takes. You get the takes on the text line, Vancouver Four Text Line. Five SEC teams in the playoff will piss. Missouri us ain't off. making the college football playoff. My God, that's an awful take. <laughs> Another one. Didn't you dub pick over Arizona's roster once Jed Fish left? What's this guy smoking? Arizona's not gonna win the Big Twelve. Well, well, they didn't get their two most important players, yeah. which is their quarterback and wide receiver. They did get a handful of uh, very good players from Arizona. But it wasn't the overhaul that many people imagined when Jed Fish left. That was part of that hire that you thought, oh, man, if he could bring a good chunk of that roster with him. He brought some key players, but, not. I mean, having the quarterback and wide receiver tandem that Arizona has is one of the better ones in college football, and it's going to get, The Big 12 is wide open this year. I don't think it's an outlandish take that they're going to win the Big 12. And you can laugh at the Missouri stuff all you want. I I think it, I think we do. The schedule's crucial to that. This so just for a high, like look in the mirror. How many people would even remember the fact of what Missouri's record was last year? They were ten and two last year, mm-hmm. ten and two, and they lost a basically one possession game to Georgia, thirty to twenty one. They lost by nine. Lost forty nine thirty nine in a shootout to LSU. They somehow beat Florida. That was a game I remember they should have lost, but they kind of pulled it out. Florida had one of those dumb Mario late-game moments. You know who their non-conference schedule is this year? I do not. See who Missouri's challenging themselves with? Tell me. Murray State. Yeah. Buffalo. (sighs) Boston College. Mm. And then for some reason, they go on the road to UMass on October 12th. And I'm sure on that date, that's a game everybody's going to circle. Mizzou at UMass. Can't wait to see how it plays out. Never know what you're going to get with the Minutemen. Those are their four... Non-conference games. They don't play Georgia. They don't play Texas. You do have Oklahoma and Alabama on the schedule. And incredibly, like, if they go 10-2, and they are in the college football playoff. Well, how many SEC teams get in this year? And then the Big Ten is like, is it just Oregon and Ohio State? Or Michigan, I went to the Reddit page. They're quite convinced that this team will not fall off the way that people think that they will. I don't think it's going to be a fall. They're not going to be a national champion, but I don't think it's going to be some massive fall off. And so maybe they'll be there. Penn State, they're dealing with new coordinators. But, like, Drew Aller's back, and if Franklin's as good a coach as some media pundits like to say he is, like, shouldn't he be able to break through? Yeah. And then the Big 12, is it one team? Is it just a conference title winner? I would be willing to bet that it's only one. The ACC feels like it's probably one unless yeah. two teams just run through that. So You're going to have Notre Dame, the Big 12 champ, the ACC champ, but the Big 12 and ACC champ won't be at-large bids. So you're going to have, what, eight at-large bids? You'll have eight at-large, and don't forget, Group of Five is already secured there. Group of Five. So seven. So seven at-large bids. Notre Dame will get one of those spots if they win 10 games. We'll see. They're probably yeah. going to win 10 games, but, you know, crazy things can happen. Freeman needs to prove it. Yeah, there's that year. So you're down to six spots, and, yeah, I think four of them will be SEC schools and two of them would be big 10 schools would be my bet right now uh ohio state nobody's giving you a chance nobody's giving us nobody's picking us this year man nobody (laughs) it's right where we want to be flying under the radar a couple weeks before the season starts